For the next 100 days, I'll be spending my time in one of the most iconic versions of Minecraft, with a limited number of blocks, a completely different health system, no beds to sleep away the night, and the introduction of the Never. Minecraft Alpha is known as one of the hardest versions in the game to survive in, so strap yourselves in as we set off in this incredibly nostalgic adventure. On day one, my world loaded up, and I took a good look around to appreciate the world generation that Minecraft Alpha had to offer, and then I suddenly heard a strange noise. What is going on over there? What the hell? I was quite curious, so I went over to take a closer look, and... Ah! It was just a pool of lava that had turned into obsidian by some flowing water. I guess I'll keep that in mind if I ever need some obsidian. Anyways, distractions aside, it was time to finally get some wood. If you didn't already know, the first night in older versions of Minecraft can be particularly brutal, so I couldn't waste any more valuable game ticks dilly-dallying around. With the oak logs I chopped down, I made my first crafting table, as well as my first wooden pickaxe of the video. Like I said before, time was of the essence, so I dug down into the surface and collected as much cobblestone as I could until my wooden pickaxe broke. With 33 cobblestone blocks to my name, I went back up to the surface and crafted myself a set of stone tools along with a furnace and a couple of chests using my newly crafted stone axe. I chopped down a tree and then quickly noticed something. Oh, do leaves not decay? Oh my god, that is so annoying. There's just going to be a bunch of floating trees now. Ugh, yeah. Anyone who's played Minecraft with me would know that there's nothing more I hate than floating trees, so this is definitely my worst nightmare. Anyways, I'll deal with that later. But for now, I used my trusty stone axe to chop down as many trees as I could until it eventually broke. Well, I think that's a sign that I've chopped enough trees down. I guess it's time to build my shelter for the night. And so, after wandering around for a bit, I decided I was going to build it near the area where I spawned. Not only did it look pretty here, but there was no beds in Alpha, so if I somehow ended up dying, I wouldn't have to walk too far to get to my home. 200 IQ, I know. Ooh, piggies. Come here, piggy, piggy, piggy. Yeah, give me those sweet, sweet pork chops. All right, let's get back to constructing this house, shall we? By the time I had finished putting up the walls, the sun had already started to go down and night was fast approaching. So as fast as I could, I moved my stuff inside, put the pork chops to cook in the furnace, and made a neat little door. And boom. Oh my god, I love the old door sounds. Whilst appreciating the beautiful night sky, I began roofing my house with some wooden planks. Oh, we made it. Okay, it's so dark in here. I can't see anything. And on that note, I thought now would be the perfect time to go mining for some coal. I started a mine shaft just outside of my house, just so that way I didn't have to run very far. Yeah, I know, I'm pretty lazy. Unfortunately, after mining for a while, my pickaxe broke. Oh, there goes my pickaxe. So I headed back up to my house to make a few more. On my way back down into the mine shaft, I saw a creeper that was cosplaying as some sort of statue. Um... Sir, hello? Are, are you okay? So it was actually pretty easy to take him out. After mining for a good while, I eventually found some coal. And let there be light. Anyways, I picked up the rest of the coal and even found some iron that was hidden away. Not too shabby. I then noticed that the sun was rising, and so I made my way back up to the surface. And there we go, that officially means we've survived the first night. And look at those suckers burning over there. <laughs> and to end off day one, I lit up the inside of my house with torches and put the iron that I mined to smelt on the furnace. At the start of day two, I used some of my torches to light up the outside of my house. However, it didn't take very long before I got distracted and took down some creepers. I headed back inside and put some sand to smelt my furnace, so that way I could beautify my house by adding some windows. In the meantime, I removed all of the wooden planks from the bottom layer of the walls and replaced them with some cobblestone. I then went back inside of my house and removed all of the grass and sand blocks from the floor and replaced them with some stone slabs to make a nice flooring. Once the sand finished smelting, I took the glass and added a few windows around the house to let in that sweet, sweet natural light in. The house was starting to come along nicely, but there was still a ton of floating leaves outside that were bugging me, so I spent the majority of day two taking them down, which took me well into the night cycle. I saw a skeleton across the lake, and for some reason, I decided to have a duel with him. It was probably in my best interest to leave him alone, though because he was super hard to kill and made me waste a ton of food. Oh. Jeez. Anyways, to pass some time, I decided I wanted to go mining. After only a short while, I found some iron which I used to make my first iron pickaxe of the video. I also found a few pieces of gold too. Don't mind if I do. I kept mining downward so that way I'd get closer to Y level 12 while simultaneously collecting a ton of cobblestone for later. I eventually got bored and decided to head back up to the surface. And would you look at that? Some daylight, meaning it's now officially day three. Since it was so bright outside and there was no mobs to distract me, I thought I'd use this precious time to start working on a second floor of the house. So I made some stairs and then laughed at how funny they looked in my inventory. <laughs> what the hell is that? Anyways, I placed the wonky stairs down and went to get some wood since I had none left. I also managed to find some sugar cane which I picked up and then planted them at the riverbank outside of my house. I then started construction on the second floor of my house using the same cobblestone and wooden planks pattern that I used for the first floor. What? I think it looks cool, okay? Leave me alone. Anyways, I then added some more windows but this time their pattern was a little different from the bottom floors. Okay, and finally let's add a door for easy access to the back porch. Anyways, it was time to make another roof. roof. And ah, uh, I ran out of wood. Back to the forest we go. Ooh, some clay. I'm actually going to pick these up because I can actually make some bricks which look pretty cool in this version of Minecraft. Anyways, let's go back to collecting wood. And it's night time already. And boom, the roof is done. I then spent the rest of the night taking out some mobs that were outside of my house. Wait, I have free string now, which means I can make a bow. Yeah, what an upgrade that is. I then spent the rest of the night of day three taking out mobs and then adding a few more windows on the second floor. At the start of day four, I spent the morning harvesting sugarcane, shoveling up some sand, killing a few friendly mobs, and hoeing some grass to collect wheat seeds. Yeah, I know, Minecraft used to be a strange game. I then went back home and created a little wheat farm at the side of my house. All right, looking good. Oh, okay, it's getting nighttime. I guess we should go mining. After mining for a while, I didn't manage to find two much, but I eventually did make it to Y level 12. All right, we've made it to the promised land. Now let's go find some diamonds. Oh, okay, and I think I just bumped into some lava. Everybody knows when you have a huge pool of lava at level 12, there's bound to be some diamonds there, right? 
right? Yeah, I wasn't so lucky this time around, but I did manage to get some iron and coal, so that's good. Anyways, I headed back, and would you look at that? It's daytime, meaning it's now officially day five. To start off the day, I made a ton of cobblestone stairs and placed them down so I can have an easier way of going up and down this mine shaft. No more holding down spacebar, thank god. Man, I really do hate these floating trees. Wait, did I just hear some zombies growling down there? I guess let's just dig down and check it out, I guess. I don't know what I was expecting, but I was hoping that they would lead me to some sort of cave system or maybe even a dungeon since I'm yet to see either of those. I easily took down the zombies and got some sweet feather drops. Unfortunately, there wasn't a cave nor a dungeon, but I did find some iron. Nice. Anyways, I went back up to the surface and ugh, I really do hate these floating trees. You know what? I'm going to craft a flint and steel and burn these leaves down because punching takes way too long. Burn, baby, burn. I'm glad to say that this session of deforestation went extremely well. Let's hope the next does too. This house can do with a few more windows, I think. So let's add some more windows. By the time I had finished placing all of the windows, it was already nighttime. So I went outside and torched up the area to prevent any hostile mobs from spawning around the house. Ooh, piggies. I need some food, so I'm going to try to take them out real quick. It turns out that that wasn't such a great idea because I was quickly ambushed by some skeletons. I ran down into the mine shaft for some shelter and then thought about what to do next. I was kind of panicking and didn't have many ideas, so I ultimately decided to dart it toward my house. Ah! Ah, oh, brilliant. Luckily, there wasn't hardcore in Minecraft Alpha, so when I spawned, I was right outside of my house. I tried to get my stuff back, but then quickly found myself in a fist fight with a spider. Sadly, it got the better of me and I died again. Okay, round two, here we go again. This time, I ran toward my items and picked most of them up. However, I only managed to get away with only a single heart left. Anyways, I cooked the pork chops that the pigs dropped, got back to almost full health, took out the spider with my iron pickaxe, and then went to get the rest of my stuff back. Oh, you know what? I'm actually gonna make a ton of arrows because I am sick of these skeletons shooting me. So yeah, let's give them a taste of their own medicine. Yeah, how do you like that? I got a little too brave though, and then ended up being on half a heart after a zombie snuck up on me. After a very eventful night, it was finally day six. Okay, let me take out this cow quickly and get some leather. Maybe I can make some armor out of it. Wait, where did the leather go? <gasps> Oh my god, that was so scary. Holy crap. Yeah, I've really got to start being aware of my surroundings. Anyways, I wasn't too happy with how my house was looking, so I added some detail and depth to the second floor of my house's windows by replacing the cobblestone with some stairs. Since last night's massacre where I died two times, I've been thinking I really need some armor, so I made myself a leather chest plate. Alright, there we go. I feel much more protected now. Anyway, I quickly done my daily harvest and then headed out to find some more food. I found some pigs and managed to get a few pork chops. I cooked them and by the time they were all finished, it was nighttime once again. I was running low on iron and had no coal, so back into the mine shafts we go. After branch mining for a short while, I bumped into my first cave. Hopefully it's full of tons of riches. And indeed it was. I managed to bump into a ton of coal and a ton of iron. After smelting the iron, I made myself a full set of iron armor. Minus the chest plate since I already had one. Anyways, I got the last of the coal that I was in this cave and then headed back up to the surface. And boom, it's now day seven. To start the day off, I took down all of the sugar cane as I wanted to transfer the farm since I didn't really like its current location. So using a bunch of dirt that I dug off camera, I made these sort of strips next to some water and then placed the sugar cane on it. All right, there we go. That's much better. Now I could just easily harvest them once they all grow. I then spent a couple of minutes sorting out my inventory and cooking a few pork chops before heading out. I desperately need a roof on this house. I think it will give it that finishing touch. I then went to chop more wood and as I would finish, I would burn the leaves as I go. All right, let's light these babies up. Oh gosh, I hope the fire doesn't spread to this tree. Hold on, let me try to break the leaves before it could spread to here. And yeah, that was inevitable. No need to panic though. I'll just use my water bucket to put it out. Yeah, never mind. That didn't go too well. I then spent the rest of the night chopping down the floating logs that were still burning. I don't know how these two blocks survived all of that, but that's a cursed image if I've ever seen one. Well, this is the result of all of that. All of the trees are gone, but hey, at least I got a huge bit of land to build stuff on now. So yeah, I guess it's not all doom and gloom after all. I then spent the rest of the night taking out some mobs and before I knew it, it was day eight. So you know what that means. It's time to do our daily harvest. I then made a couple of chests and placed each one by their respective farm. I made a nine chest plate because my level one was about to break and there we go. I'm way more protected now. Anyways, I thought it was finally time to add a roof to the top of my house. So I grabbed some cobblestone stairs and got right to work. After some trial and error and trying out different designs, it was now nighttime and I was finished doing my roof. Okay, we're done now. I think that looks great. Time to add a chimney now. And a chimney is a chimney without some smoke. So let's add some of that too. And you know what? Some slabs down here would look pretty good. I then removed the ceiling on the second floor of the house, giving me more space and making things feel a little less cramped. I then furnished it up a bit by adding a safety banister around my staircase and a table with some chairs. Unfortunately, in this version of Minecraft, you can't place the pressure plates on top of fences, so you kind of got to be creative and work with what you're given, but I don't think it looks too bad. For the whole of day nine, I wanted to focus on making the interior of my house look a little less plain, so I started by adding a painting to the wall and giving my chair some armrests using some science. I then did my daily sugarcane harvest, but this time I converted the canes into paper, the paper into books, and the books into some bookshelves. Using the bookshelves and a few wooden stairs, I made a cool little study with a nice view looking to Toward the land where all the trees got burned. I really should think of a name for that place. Anyways, I then went out punching sheep to collect as much wool as I possibly could, as I was gonna need a ton of it for a build that I was planning to start soon. It was then nighttime, so I lit up the dark areas around my land using some torches and then headed down into the mine shaft. Let's go down to the mine, mine shaft. 
Damn, do I have some great vocals. Any record labels want to sign me? Feel free. Unfortunately, I still didn't manage to find any diamonds, but I found a decent amount of iron and coal, so there's that. Anyways, I headed back up to the surface and it was daytime, meaning it was now day 10. I then made myself a couple of boats and set out to find some clay. Thankfully, it didn't take too long before I found some. I'm absolutely swimming in clay right now. Holy crap, there's so much. After collecting all of the clay, I hopped back on my boat in the hopes of finding some more. By the way, if you were wondering, the actual reason I need clay is because I need a bunch of bricks for the build that I mentioned earlier. Ideally, if I could, I'd be using red wool instead, but unfortunately, dyes were added in Minecraft Alpha, so there was no way of me getting colored wool in survival mode. So for that reason, bricks are pretty much the only alternative that I can use, since they're the only block in Alpha that has a red texture. Like I said before, you've got to be extra creative in these older versions of Minecraft. Ooh, finally some roses. I've been looking for these everywhere. I spotted lots of pigs, so I killed them for their pork chops and then headed home. I cooked all of the pork chops and then put all the clay I collected to smell. In the meantime, I made a fridge. Yes, this is a fridge. Huh? And then put all of my food inside of there. See, I even added a little sign now. Now it looks more like a fridge, right guys? Right guys? At the start of day 11, I made a couple more paintings and placed them on the walls downstairs. I then went outside to collect some dirt and placed them under my windows. That way, once the grass would spread, I could plant some flowers on it, making things look a little extra pretty. The furnace has burned through all of the coal and smelted almost all of the clay, giving me a stack and a half of bricks. Some of the grass had already spread to the dirt blocks, so I placed some dandelions and roses on them. How pretty is that? I burned through all of my coal from smelting all of the clay into bricks, but I didn't really feel like mining, so I decided to go out and explore the land in the hopes that I'd find some exposed ore. Wait, are those mushrooms on a beach? That is, that is very strange. I mean, I'll take them though. <laughs> ah, finally some coal. Unfortunately, it wasn't much, but I mined it all up anyways. I then spent the rest of the night killing mobs, and before I knew it, it was day 12. When I got back home, all of the grass had spread, so I placed down all of the remaining flowers. Using some signs, I created this cool flower pot design. I created some more signs, and then did the same to the rest of the grass blocks. It's daily harvest time, you already know the drill. I needed more flint to make arrows, so I stacked some gravel all the way up to the height limit, which at the time was 128, and then carefully mined all of the gravel on the way down. I did this a few more times until I had a total of 34 flint. Not a bad haul. Alrighty, a stack and 19. That's like 83 arrows, so not too bad. I then spent the rest of day 12 taking out hostile and friendly mobs that had spawned in Forest Fire Avenue. Yeah, you know what? I like that name. Forest Fire Avenue. Yeah, that's what I'm going to call it. It's now day 13, and it was finally time to start working on that build that I've been collecting all of the wool and bricks for. So I grabbed all of the blocks I was going to need and headed towards Forest Fire Avenue. Some of you might have guessed what I'm building now, but if you still don't know, can we have a drum roll, please? Yep. It's a lighthouse. These things were a huge staple of every Minecraft world back in the day, so I thought it'd only be right if I built one in my world too. Unfortunately though, I did run out of wool, so I had to stop construction for a while. Since there was nothing else left to do, I done my daily sugarcane and wheat harvest. Yep. Very fun. I needed more wool if I wanted to finish off my lighthouse, so I spent the whole of day 14 exploring the beautiful world that Minecraft Alpha had to offer. I ended up finding tons of materials such as coal, iron, clay, and a bunch of wool. When I got back home, it was night time, but that wasn't going to stop me from working on my lighthouse, so I got right to it. I didn't know exactly how tall I wanted this thing to be, but I knew for sure that I didn't want it to be too small. Unfortunately, I ran out of wool again, so we'll have to resume building it soon, but not too soon, because for day 15, I wanted to take a little break from building the lighthouse and instead focus my attention on creating a storage and smelting room. Since I didn't have a basement yet, I thought it'd be perfect to build it right under my floorboards. Normally, I would have built a storage room by now, but the reason it's taken this long is because there isn't that many blocks in Minecraft Alpha. But hey, it's about time. I don't know what it is, but the lighting in Minecraft Alpha really gives this basement like a spooky sort of feel to it. Anyways, I then crafted a few signs and labeled each chest with each respective item that they'd be holding. For the rest of day 15, I transferred all of the items from the chest in my kitchen to the chest in the basement. I then spent the beginning of day 16 chopping down a bunch of wood and then burning down the leaves. Don't worry though, because this time there was no forest fire avenue part two. To make my life a little easier, I thought I'd make a tree farm so that way once I chopped down the wood, I can easily burn down the leaves without risking burning my entire world. And it was now day 17, so let's finally complete the lighthouse. I built a few more layers of wool and brick until I finally found the perfect height to stop building at. There's really no point of making a lighthouse if you don't have a platform to stand on once you reach the top. So I made an observation deck where I could overlook my world. Alright, let's put a roof on this sucker and we should be done. So using some stone slabs, I made the roof and then added a huge pillar at the top of it. Alright, there we go, it's complete. That's looking really good from this angle. Since I had no iron and barely any coal left, I went to spend a few days branch mining to get as many supplies as I could. So I made myself a clock to keep track of the days and headed down into the mine shaft. I ended up mining for the rest of day 18 and the whole of day 19. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to find a single diamond despite digging for two straight days. I thought this was a little strange and maybe I was doing something wrong. At the start of day 20, I did a little digging around on the internet and found out that it was easier to find diamonds on the Y level 16 coordinate. So I mined up to that level and created a new branch mine there. And what do you know? I finally found diamonds. Damn, it's only two, but I just need one more for a diamond pickaxe. Let's hope I find another one. And there's the third. Hell yeah, my first diamond pickaxe of the series. This is exciting. At the start of day 21, I took all of the 
blocks are mine during the last few days and went to my storage room to put them all away. Ah, what a view. I love this lighthouse. Since I finally had a diamond pickaxe, that meant that I could now mine obsidian. So I headed down into the little cave under my house that I discovered on day one and mined myself 10 pieces of obsidian. By the time I went to the surface, it was already night. Where the hell did all that time go? Well, I guess it's time for a nightly harvest. It looked like my new tree farm was working. So I spent the rest of the night chopping down all of the wood and then burning down the leaves. It was time to start my new build project. So in the morning of day 22, I went over to this small island near my sugarcane farm and chopped down the massive tree that was on it. Honestly, watching leaves burn will never not be satisfying. Anyways, I placed down my nether portal and entered the purple abyss. Whoa, this place looks so empty. It kind of makes it even more spooky if you think about it, especially with how dark it is too. After wandering around for a bit, I found some glowstone. Oh man, only one dust. Are you serious? I mined up all of the glowstone with my fist and then realized something even more annoying. Wait, why can't I craft a glowstone block? Oh my, I just realized that I think you need nine glowstone to make one single glowstone block. Jeez, that is expensive. After walking a little further forward, I found some soul sand. I mined about half a stack of it before I went off to mine some netherrack. This stuff is what the majority of the island was going to be made of, so I knew I was going to need a ton of it. Ah, some more glowstone. Don't mind if I do. And after all of that, I only managed to get five glowstone blocks out of it. Anyways, I picked up more soul sand to get myself to a full stack, and then I fought this ghast. Die, you foul beast. Wait, why aren't my arrows hit right now? <laughs> it's like going through him. I eventually ended up killing the ghast, and then went back to the overworld. For the rest of day 22 and the start of day 23, I spent my time building a bridge that connects the mainland to the nether island that I was about to build. If you haven't noticed by now, I've been going for more of a classic and simplistic build style, and the bridge that I'm currently making is no different. I just love the minimalistic feel of Alpha Minecraft. With the bridge complete, it was time to start working on the nether island. So I started off by removing the sand and placing netherrack as I go. For the sides of the island, I mainly used soul sand to give it that beach sort of feel that sand would give in the overworld. I worked all throughout the night of day 23 and into the morning of day 24. To finish off the island, I made a small plus sign out of the glowstone blocks and then planted some saplings. With one project down, I already had another in mind and this one's going to involve a lot of glass. So I put nine stacks of sand to smelt my furnaces. It felt a little weird having one diamond tool and the rest being stone. So I made myself a brand new set of iron tools to pair with my diamond pickaxe. By the time I went back up to the surface, it was already nighttime. So I thought I'd use this time to go up to my lighthouse to see how the nether island looked at night. I kind of like it. Once the trees grow, I think it'll look better though. I didn't really have anything else to do. So for the rest of the night, I decided to destroy all of the floating leaves that I left around my house and place down some torches to light up the area. At the start of day 25, I planted the saplings that I collected from all of the leaves and then went to get all of the glass that I left to smell overnight. The reason I needed so much glass is because I wanted to create a greenhouse. I thought the little wheat farm that I made outside of my house had outgrown itself. And besides, I think adding a greenhouse would add a little bit more personality to my world. I decided to build it behind my house where this grass hill was. First, I dug all of the grass on top of it to flatten out the hill a bit. And then I done some terraforming to keep the natural look of the hill. I then used some dirt to create a shape of the greenhouse and I was pretty happy with how it came out. So I replaced all of the dirt blocks with some stone slabs and then placed glass on top of it. I worked through the entire night of day 25, placing the glass walls and then creating a sphere like roof. This took me well into the morning of day 26 when I finished placing the roof. It was time to get rid of my old wheat farm. So I destroyed it, gathered all of the seeds and the wheat and then started working on the interior of the greenhouse. Before replanting the seeds, I made a gravel path going from the entrance to the back of the building. I then placed water and tilled the grass around it. I kept doing this until all of the grass in the greenhouse was tilled and then planted all of the seeds I had. By the time I had finished, it was nighttime and I noticed it was a little dark inside. So using some stone slabs, I made these floating lights with torches around them. I had to do this on top of every water source so that way the whole of the interior would be lit up. All right, and boom, finished. I am really liking the look of that. With no more wheat farm besides my house, things were looking a little bit empty. So for now, I got myself some signs. I made another flower pot. I don't know what it is, guys, but something's telling me that this cow really likes the flower pot I just built. And then spent the rest of day 26 digging the sand that was near my house and replacing it with dirt. That way, once the grass spreads, the land will look like it blends more naturally. I carried on doing this at the start of day 27, all the way until it got dark. I went to check if the trees on the Never Island had grown, and sure enough, they had. Okay, now that I have the shapes of the trees, I want to make these look more nevery, I guess. So for that, I'm going to need some Neverack, some soul sand, and a lot of glowstone. And a lot of glowstone I went to get, because I then spent the rest of day 27 and the start of day 28 mining as much glowstone as I could possibly find. By the time I got back to the overworld, I had 20 glowstone blocks, which isn't a whole lot considering how much glowstone I mined. Anyways, before working on the trees, I decided I wanted to replace the floating torches in the greenhouse with some fancy new chandeliers. That is definitely the most majestic greenhouse I've ever seen. Carrying on the theme of making fancy looking lights, I thought my wooden bridge could do with some lamps. All right, I like the look of that. I think I should also make some on the other side too, just so it looks more symmetrical. You know what? Yeah, I really like that. Looks much better. After that, I only had 11 glowstone blocks to my name and I knew I was going to need way more for my nether tree. So back to the nether we go. Unfortunately, after wandering around for a while, I only managed to find a single cluster of glowstone. As I was mining it, a bunch of ghasts ambushed me. So I got quite overwhelmed and headed back through the portal. It was now day 29, meaning it was finally time to make the nether trees. The plan was to make the trees look like they came straight out of the nether, but look slightly different from one another. So for the smaller one, I decided to make the leaves out of netherrack and the tree chunk out of soul sand. Okay, that's nice. Now I'm gonna make the other one out of glowstone. And we're out of glowstone already. Who would have thought? Oh well, back to the nether we go. I managed to get a decent amount of glowstone this time, but when I got back and placed them all down, I had barely made a dent. Ugh, I really hate glowstone. So I spent the rest of day 29 and the start of day 30 trying to find some more. After wandering around for a bit, I finally found some. All right, now the only problem is, is that there's a ton of lava and a ton of grass around. So it's gonna be quite a pain trying to mine them all up. And quite the pain it was. 
because only a few seconds after, I clumsily fell into lava. Thankfully though, I had plenty of pork chop on me, so I managed to keep my health up, but sadly, the fire shredded through most of my armor, leaving me only with leggings and boots with low durability. As I was feeling quite vulnerable, I returned home to gather my bearings. Sadly, I had no iron to make armor, so going back to the nether to get glowstone was a no-go. So instead, I headed down into the mine shaft and decided to spend a few days mining to stock up on supplies. I ended up mining for the rest of day 30 and the whole of day 31. Sadly, I didn't manage to find any diamonds on either day. However, on day 32, my luck changed and I finally found some. After getting a little bit bored of mining, I went back up to my house and crafted myself a set of diamond tools. And would you look at that? Most of the wheat's grown in the greenhouse, so it's time to harvest. I noticed that there were still some floating leaves outside of my house and you guys already know they're the bane of my existence. So I spent the next several minutes taking them down and by the time I was finished, it was already getting dark. So I used this precious time to chop down some trees. I was planning on doing some construction to my house to make it much bigger. So I was gonna need as many logs as I could possibly get. I then spent the rest of the night harvesting sugarcane and testing out my shiny brand new diamond sword on some mobs. I've been meaning to label things around my world for a while. So I made a couple of signs and placed one down at Forest Fire Avenue and one above my door. It was now day 33, the day of construction. So I gathered all of the blocks I thought I'd need and got to expand my house. Before starting the project, I didn't really have any blueprint or plan of how I wanted the house to look. So I ended up just going with the flow. To make a long story short, I ended up working on the walls and the floor of the house for the entirety of day 33. At the start of day 34, I decided to make some furniture inside of the house. So that way I'd have a better idea of what each room would be. After experimenting with various designs, I was getting increasingly frustrated as I wasn't happy with how I built the house's layout. I can't lie, I don't really like how any of this is looking so far. I think me just freestyling it without a plan wasn't a good idea because I'm really not a fan of this current layout. So I think I'm going to redo the whole thing. At the start of day 35, I was ready to fix the huge mess that I created. So I started off by tearing down the entire building, including all of the furniture and the floor. This took the entirety of day 35 due to the sheer amount of blocks that I used when building the layout. Anyways, with everything being demolished, it was time for the rebuild. So for day 36, I worked on expanding the walls, but this time making it nowhere near as big as before. I then destroyed the upstairs floor and replaced it by making it one block taller. Finally, I added in some new windows and then demolished the roof. On day 37, I finished breaking the roof and put a new one on. The reason I'd done this was because I wanted each floor to have two blocks of headspace. I then spent the rest of day 37 fixing the windows and even adding a little bit of detail to them on the outside. It was now day 38, which meant that it was now time to furnish the inside of the house. Okay, I forgot to record me making this dining table, but look how awesome it looks. I actually really love it. I then went to mine up some obsidian as I was going to need it for the kitchen floor. When I came up to the surface, it was already nighttime. Yeah, I don't know how it took that long. I then spent the rest of the night of day 38 making the kitchen. Honestly, I really like how this came out. It just feels like really cozy and warm here. I just, I just love it. All right, day 39, time to work on the upstairs. I wanted the second floor to be my bedroom, but also a lounge area. So I started off by making this cozy little sitting area with a glass coffee table, even though there's no coffee in Minecraft, but shh, don't tell anyone. Anyways, I then made some cabinets made of stone slabs and placed a ton of paintings above it. I also remade the study that I made back in day nine. And now it was time for the grand finale. It is kind of a shame that beds weren't added in Minecraft Alpha, but it also kind of gives you an excuse to build a super huge king size bed like this one. Oh yeah, I'm going to be sleeping good tonight. That's for sure. I then did some last minute touch ups, like adding some signs to the furniture, torching up the roof and planting a sapling near my sitting area. Finally, I finished off day 39 by storing all of the blocks and items that I used inside of my chests. For pretty much the entirety of day 40, I AFK'd and stared at this dirt block that this sapling was on, hoping that the grass would eventually spread to it and I could plug up the hole in the wall. To my dismay, the grass didn't spread, so I pretty much wasted an entire day doing nothing. And on that note, it was time to be productive once again. So I headed down into the basement and gathered a bunch of supplies to take with me into the mines. I've been meaning to go on a several day long mining spree for quite some time now, as I barely got any coal, iron, and certainly no diamonds. My objective was to try and get enough diamonds so I could make myself a full set of armor and tools. After mining for a bit, I was fortunate to mine my first four diamonds of the trip. My luck continued on day 42, as I managed to find a vein of two diamonds and another vein of four much later. Sadly, my luck stopped for a while because on day 43, I only managed to bump into some iron, gold, and this ninja zombie that snuck up on me. Oh, Jesus! What the hell? Yeah, it was fair to say that I got pretty startled. No worries though, because on day 44, my luck had turned once again, and I found a couple of diamonds. Two diamonds? Is that it? Yeah. Oh. I thought it was going to be more. Yeah, I was hoping for a vein of at least three, but that's okay though, because shortly after, I mined into this cave. The cave ended up having a ton of coal and iron, but the best part about it was that I found my first dungeon of the video. <gasps> oh my god, it's a dungeon. I found a dungeon. I've actually found a dungeon. I've been wanting to find these for so long. I mined up toward it, took out the zombies with relative ease, and looted the chests. I ended up finding a couple of saddles, which is pretty cool and all, but the main reason I was excited was because of the mossy cobblestone. I had an idea of a project that I wanted to build, and I was going to need a ton of this stuff to complete it. On day 45, I went back to branch mining and found a couple more diamonds. Shortly after, I bumped into a cave where there was flowing water, creepers, and lava. So there was only one thing to do in this situation. Burn, baby, burn. I went on to explore the cave with the flowing water, and I ended up in a brawl with a zombie. Sadly, he got the better of me, and I actually ended up dying. Luckily, I remembered my way back, and none of my stuff was lost. Phew, that was a close call. The same zombie wanted to 1v1 me once again, but this time, I played it safe and kept my distance. Although I didn't lose any of my stuff, I wasn't planning on dying again. So I made my first piece of diamond armor, ensuring that I would stay well protected. On day 46, it was back to business, and I resumed mining anything and everything that I found in this cave. After venturing a little deeper, I managed to find another dungeon, but this time, it was a spider spawner. Aren't these things supposed to be really rare? Anyways, I took out all the spiders, looted the chests, and then mined up all of the mossy cobblestone. Alright, a stack and two of mossy. That's actually really good. My luck didn't stop there though, because when
when I returned to my branch mine, I found a bunch more diamonds. To quote Ice Cube, I gotta say, today was a good day. And day 47 was also a good day because I added three more diamonds to my collection. Nice. And that trend seemed to continue because on day 48, I found a ton more diamonds. Let's freaking go. Day 49 wasn't as kind to me though because it was kind of a dry day and no diamonds were found sadly. And finally, day 50, my last day of my mining spree. And what other better way to end off than finding some diamonds? Anyways, I grabbed all of the goodies that I collected during this mining spree from this chest and headed back up to my house. Ah, <sighs> some lovely sunlight. I can't tell you how good it feels to be out of the dark. Probably the most exciting thing about the mining spree that I just went on is how much iron I collected because that meant that I can now actually upgrade my fridge to look like an actual fridge. You see this thing right in front of me? This thing right here made those very long and tedious nine days of mining worth every second. I then headed down into the basement and spent a few minutes sorting out my inventory and putting everything I mined away. I then made the diamond armor that was the entire reason that I even went on a nine day mining spree to begin with. Oh yeah, I feel like a million bucks now. That feeling didn't stop there though because I also made myself a fresh set of diamond tools. And on that note, I headed back into the nether to try and finally get enough glowstone to finally finish making the nether tree. Most of the visible glowstone was on the roof of the nether, so I had to safely make my way up to it. After cautiously tunneling my way to the glowstone, I collected as many as I could without risking my life. It was now day 51 and I mined one more cluster of glowstone before heading back into the overworld. I knew I wasn't going to have enough to complete the tree, but I placed down all the blocks I had on me so I could see how many I roughly needed to get still. Okay, I'd say another 20 or 30 blocks should do it. And then I'm done with this project. Before heading back into the nether though, I spent the rest of day 51 chopping down some wood. It was time to finally complete this glowstone tree. So at the start of day 52, I headed into the nether and explored some uncharted territory. I managed to find a bunch of clusters of glowstone blocks, which I mined with relative ease. I carried on well into day 53 until I finally thought I had enough. So I converted the dust into blocks, giving me 22 in total. When I got back to the nether island, I held my breath and crossed my fingers as I placed down each block. That took way longer than it should have. I honestly never thought I'd hate glowstone this much, but I do. So thanks Minecraft Alpha. With that being said, the nether island was now officially complete and it was finally time to move on to the next project. So I headed home, stored away all of my items in my chest and went down into the mine shaft to get a bunch of cobblestone. Another classic build that most alpha worlds had back in the day were castles. So I thought making one at Forest Fire Avenue would be a cool idea. I started off by digging dirt to flatten out the surface a bit. Using the dirt that I mined, I did a bit of terraforming so that way the land would keep its natural look. Okay, it was building time. At the start of day 54, I used some cobblestone to create the foundation of how the castle would look. I was planning on having four watchtowers, so I made these circle shapes in each corner and connected them all up using some cobblestone. I then went around in a circle, placing two cobblestone at a time until the tower was 11 blocks high. I then placed a bunch of fences to create a gate at the entrance of the castle. Okay, that's looking good so far. I think I should replace the grass underneath it though with some wooden planks. So I did just that and then I made a second gate opposite to the first one I just built. I then made some ladders and placed them down until it reached the top of the tower. Whilst up there, I mined some cobblestone and placed stone slabs between the gaps, creating some merlons and krennels. Anyways, using some more slabs, I created a middle platform and then one at the top to overlook the world from the tower. To complete the first tower, I used some fences to create windows on the side of it. Next, I connected the first tower to the other one by creating a bridge between them. With the first tower and bridge being built, I repeated this exact same process three more times, which took me well into the night of day 55. Okay, that looks great. Now, time to work on the courtyard. I created a circular path that surrounded a patch of grass. The next day, I went out and collected 11 stacks of dirt. Yep, that's right, 11 stacks. Now, why do I need that much dirt? Well, I was about to build a floating planet above the castle. Yep, you heard that right too. It might not make much sense now, but just you wait. Anyways, I stacked up 27 blocks of dirt and then began building it. I worked through the rest of day 56 and finished around midday of day 57. Okay, that's looking awesome so far. Now we just need the grass to grow on it. So using the dirt I had in my inventory, I made a staircase connecting the planet to the grass on the ground. For the rest of day 57, I did some last minute touch-ups like placing lava on the roof of the corridors, torching up the planet, planting a sapling at the center of it, and then chopping down some trees. Whilst waiting for the grass to spread to the planet and the sapling to turn into a tree, I spent the entirety of day 58 exploring some land on the hunt for roses. On my mini adventure, I found some cacti, some dandelions, pumpkins, and a ton of roses. At the start of day 59, I made a bunch of buckets and then went into the nether to fill them up with lava. I returned to my castle and then built a layer of glass on the inside wall. Using the buckets, I filled the inside of the wall with lava, which created this interesting sort of design. I repeated this exact same process two more times and boom, we're done. I really like the look of that. I then spent the rest of day 59 fixing up the courtyard. All right, and then once the grass spreads, that should look good again. At the start of day 60, I spent a few minutes organizing my inventory and then went over to check up on my saplings. To my surprise, they had finally grown. So I chopped down the tree on the planet, which left the leaves floating. And then I did the same for the one in my courtyard. I then poured water, which flowed all the way through the planet and into the tree in my courtyard. The entire reason I did this was so that I had a cool way of going up and down between the castle and the planet. I then made myself some signs and appropriately named the castle, the castle of fire and water. Whilst waiting for the grass to spread to the planet, I wanted to spend a few days working on another project that I had in mind. So I got a bunch of sand and then created a small island by my lighthouse. The next day, I went out looking for some clay. Oh, that's a cool little floating island over there. Not as good as my planet though. <laughs> After walking for a while, I spotted a huge cluster of clay in the distance. I mined it all up, rode my boat back home, and then put my clay to smelt. Whilst it was cooking in the furnaces, I went out and labeled my lighthouse just like I did with my castle earlier. All right, there we go. A very appropriate name, I'd say. When I got back home, most of the bricks had finished smelting, so I converted them all into blocks and went back to the sandy island. And finally, it was time to build. If you haven't guessed what it is by now, let me just tell you. This is pretty much supposed to be a mini version of those huge brick pyramids that you'd find back in the Infdev version of Minecraft. So I thought it'd be pretty cool to pay a little homage to them, since I definitely wasn't building a full one-to-one -one scale of it. Anyways, I had a lot of builds 
around my world so far, but in my opinion, they all felt a bit disjointed. So for the rest of day 61, I spent my time creating paths to each build, so that way they'd feel all connected to one another. All right, a brand new day, which means it's time to start a brand new project. I thought the land around my house was looking a bit plain and boring, so to add a little bit more personality to it, I wanted to make a cozy little water garden. First, I started off by digging a decent sized hole, which was going to be the pond. Next, I filled up a ton of buckets with water and dumped them all into the pond until it was full. I then dug into the pond, giving it a little extra depth and texture. Next, it was time to build a focal point of the pond. So using some regular cobble and mossy cobble, I made this cool little structure, which was going to act as a source of water for the waterfall. All right, that looks sick. There's no point of having a cozy pond if you don't have anywhere to enjoy it from. So I made this little patio area with some comfy chairs and a table. Next, it was time to decorate it with some plants and trees. So I spent the next several minutes breaking leaves. Eventually, I ended up with six saplings, which I would then plant around my pond. I then sprinkled a ton of flowers and roses around and then finished off by planting a few sugarcane. And then to complete the project, I walled off the garden with some fences. I'm honestly loving how this came out. And once the trees are fully grown, it's going to look even better. So I can't wait for that. With another project down, it was time to move on to the next. This time, I wanted to make a village. I wanted to keep the nostalgic vibes consistent throughout all of my builds. So for this project, I was going to build each structure similar to how they looked prior to the 1.14 village and pillage update. This was going to be quite a big project and I was going to need a lot of space to build it. So I spent the entirety of day 63 and 64 destroying this massive mountain in my bridge and then flattening out the area. I was running quite low on wood and saplings. So I spent the entire of day 65 breaking leaves and chopping down trees. It was the start of day 66, which meant it was finally time to start construction of our village. First up was the old school blacksmith building. I wanted this to be the first thing I built because not only was it the most unique looking structure out of all of the others, but also because it was one of the earliest structures that contained super good loot in it. So it definitely ranks up there as one of the most important structures in Minecraft's history. Next up on the list was the butcher house. So at the start of day 67, I spent a few minutes expanding the land with some dirt before beginning construction. Similar to my water garden, I also wanted this village to feel cozy and warm. So to do that, I wanted all of the buildings to be relatively close to each other. It took me the entire day and a little bit of the night cycle until I finished the butcher house. And I think it turned out pretty well. At the start of day 68, I made a couple of street lamps and then extended the land a bit so I'd have more room to build the rest of the village on. All right, now it was time to build the third structure of the village. This one was called a small house and for obvious reasons, it didn't take too long to build. Ah, oh, look how cute it is. Not too long after that, I built the good old classic wheat farm right beside of it. I spent the first half of day 69 collecting a ton of dirt in the mines, which I used to expand the land. By the time I was ready to build the next structure of the village, it was nighttime. Everyone knows you can't have a village without a place of worship. So I spent the rest of the night building the classic cobblestone church. All right, and we're done. I really like how big the building is. It kind of like stands out from all the rest. On day 70, I headed down into the mine to dig up some dirt until I randomly bumped into some diamonds. Well, I definitely wasn't expecting to find diamonds, but I guess I'll take them. Anyways, I expanded the land using the dirt before starting the next building. Next up on the list was the farm shack. This was another small one, so it didn't take too long to build either. I then spent the rest of the night expanding the land a little bit more. At the start of day 71, it was back to business, which meant another structure to build. I hadn't actually built a house in the village yet, so I thought there'd be no better time than the present. This time, I was building the large house, which actually was quite complex to build due to the shape of the roof. And by the time I finished building it, it was nighttime. Okay, that looks pretty cool. I'm actually happy with that. For the first half of day 72, I wanted to take a short break from building and instead have a day of relaxation by breaking leaves, planting saplings, extending the gravel path, making more street lamps, and expanding the village's land. Before I knew it, it was day 73, so I got right back to building. This was going to be the last structure of the village, so I wanted to make it a very important one. And what's more important than a library? It didn't take me too long to build it either. And when I finished, I noticed something really weird about it. This is probably one of the uglier buildings in the entire village, but don't blame me. Blame Jeb. He's the one who built it after all. It's okay though, Jeb. I promise we love you very much. Anyways, with the library being finished, that pretty much meant that the village was complete. And so I spent the rest of day 73 just adding a few finishing touches, like planting saplings around the village, adding signs to the structures, and then doing a good old classic daily harvest. Boy, it's been a while since I've said that. Anyways, when a project is complete, that only means there's another one on the horizon. And so with that being said, I went into my basement to gather supplies for my next build. All right, so my plan is to create a small hot air balloon and it actually doesn't require too many supplies other than a lot of wool. So that pretty much means I have to go around punching a ton of sheep. And on that note, I spent the next five minutes going around collecting wool until I collected a little bit over a stack. With all of the supplies in my inventory, now I just had to find a place to build it. Honestly, I think it looked pretty cool on the sky just there, right next to the lighthouse. So yeah, you know what? Screw it. Let's build it right there. And so I headed into the ocean and stacked my way up using some sand blocks until I was slightly above the cloud level. I started off by building the basket of the balloon, which was quite simple since it only required a handful of planks and fences. I then worked my way up to the balloon itself, which was slightly more complex than a basket, but still relatively easy to build. Unfortunately though, I made a slight miscalculation on how many wool blocks I'd need. Oh, for God's sake, I've run out of wool. Well, let's go back down, I guess. And so I headed back down to the ground and spent the rest of day 74 collecting wool. I still didn't think I had quite enough wool to finish the hot air balloon, so I continued searching for sheep at the start of day 75. But after looking around for a few minutes, I didn't come across any, so I decided to hedge my bets and stack my way up to the hot air balloon, hoping I'd have enough wool to complete it. Yep, I knew it. Looks like I'm free short. So on that note, I headed back down, but this time leaving some flowing water so that way I could just swim back up when I return. After looking around for a few minutes, I found two sheep, giving me enough wool to complete the project. When I finally reached the top of the balloon, I placed the final three blocks down and then headed into the basket where I placed down a crafting table and a chest full of sand. To finish off, I placed some torches on the side of the basket and then made my way down to the ground. I then spent the rest of the night collecting wood and then punching down leaves. I carried on well on day 76 until I had almost half a stack of saplings and then went down into the mines and collected a bunch of dirt. With it, I created another staircase going up to the planet, hoping that would help speed up the grass spreading process. All right, hopefully this actually helps somewhat and I didn't just waste my time. Anyways, I hadn't yet seen my hot air balloon in its full glory from afar. So
dirt stairs to take a good look at it. Honestly, looks really good, but is there like a dirt block on there or something? Yeah, I honestly don't know how I didn't notice that before. I quickly sat my way up there and removed the block. I then resumed breaking all of the leaves, which took a painful 10 minutes. When I was done, I had over 50 saplings, which I replanted at the tree farm and then placed them all around my land. I wanted the land to be full of vegetation to give it that natural cabin in the woods sort of feel to my home. It was the start of day 77 and I wanted to relocate my mine shaft. So the first step to do so was to head down into the mines and transfer all of my chests full of cobble into my basement. Although this mine shaft served me well and has been quite convenient due to how close it is to my house, I think I've outgrown it. I was never really a fan of how it looked since it's pretty much just a glorified hole in the ground that led to a branch mine. And especially now, it definitely sticks out like a sore thumb. Anyways, once all of the cobblestone was stored away, I gathered a bunch of resources that I thought would make a nice looking mine shaft entrance. I left my house and then covered my old mine shaft up with some dirt once and for good. Next, I just needed to find a good spot to start a new one. After looking around for a few minutes, I found a nice spot right behind my village, so I started digging. I worked throughout the entire night of day 77 using logs to create pillars, stairs to get down into the mine shaft entrance, and a few other bits and bobs. I was going for a grimy, worn out sort of aesthetic with the mine shaft, sort of like it's been used many times before, and I was pretty happy with how it was coming along. Okay, I really love how that looks. I just need to add a few more finishing touches and then I can start mining downward. So I placed down a crafting table in a furnace, made a bunch of stairs, and then began my descent into Y level 16. I mined downward for a very peaceful 10 minutes until all of a sudden I bumped into a cave and a skeleton started attacking me. I tried to swing at him with my sword, but unfortunately his sniping skills were too MLG, so he ended up killing me. Luckily, the mine shaft wasn't too far away from my spawn point, so I took the walk of shame back to where my items were, and thankfully nothing was lost. I wasn't really in a cave exploration mood just yet, so I carried on mining downward and placing stairs as I go along. On day 79, I kept venturing downward until I bumped into another cave. I kept placing down stairs until all of a sudden oh my god let's get the crap out of me at that time i had no idea where the creeper came from but looking back on the footage in slow motion i can almost guarantee that it spawned right next to me and instantly blew me up anyways i took another walk of shame and headed down into the mine shaft to collect my stuff wait where did my torches and my leggings go oh for god's sake don't tell me they blew up after wandering around looking for the rest of my stuff i found something even better Ooh, diamonds didn't expect that since i had no torches it was almost impossible to see so i crafted some makeshift redstone ones for now i ended up mining four diamonds which wasn't too bad luckily i found some coal so i made some torches to light up the cave ah so that's where my leggings and torches went. I guess when the creeper blew up, they must have like just flew up here or something. I wasn't planning on exploring the cave, but I thought since I was already down here, I might as well take a slight detour and at least mine the exposed ores. Fortunately, I made a great choice because I actually managed to bump into some more diamonds. Um, okay. I mean, I wasn't expected to find more diamonds, but thank you very much. After mining a good few ores up, I decided to head back to the staircase since I didn't really want to divert from the task at hand. So I went back and finished placing down the rest of the stairs. Oh, I'm already at Y level 16. I didn't even notice. I guess my work here is done then. So on that note, I headed up to the surface and finished destroying these leaves that I left floating. When I finished clearing all of them out, I made a gravel path going from the mine shaft and into the village. As one final touch, I added a street lamp near the path and then headed down into the mine shaft. I then spent the rest of day 79 exploring the cave and mining up all of its riches. This cave had a million different passageways and I was getting slightly overwhelmed, so I made my way back to the surface and then realized it was day 80. My inventory was a hot mess after all of that building and mining, so I headed home to sort it out. My diamond armor is pretty useless since it's so low in durability, so I'm just gonna make a fresh set of iron armor instead since I have barely any diamonds. And on that note, I thought I could utilize my freshly built mine shaft and go on a short mining break. So I gathered some supplies and headed back down into my mine shaft. I spent the rest of day 80 mining away, and unfortunately, I didn't find any diamonds, but I did find some iron and coal, so there's that. The mining trip was slightly short lived though, as I got bored pretty quickly. So, at the start of day 81, I headed back home and gathered some supplies for a new project. Alright, I think around here will look cool, especially since it's next to a castle, and it makes more sense thematically as well. Yeah, I really like this spot, to be honest. Let's build this pirate ship. Although it won't be very practical, since it won't be really moving anywhere, I thought it'd be quite fun to build one of these in my world, since I don't think I've ever built one throughout the 12 years that I've played Minecraft. I worked through the entire night of day 81 and into the morning of day 82. Unfortunately, I didn't quite anticipate how much wood I'd actually need to build the entire ship. So at the start of day 82, I went over to my tree farm to chop down some wood. All right, I think I have enough. So I headed back to the ship and resumed construction. Once again, I worked tirelessly throughout the night, this time building the mast, the quarter deck, and the captain's quarters. At the start of day 83, I built the steering wheel of the ship, which fun fact is actually called a helm. Next, it was time to do some interior decorating in the captain's quarters. And in the end, it turned out looking more like a kitchen than it did a captain's quarters. But hey, it kind of works out in the end, because if you don't have a happy and well-fed captain, you may as well guarantee that the ship will sink, literally and metaphorically. Although the ship wasn't able to move, it still needed a sail on its mast, so I went out to collect some wool. After collecting exactly 29 blocks, I headed back and put up the sail. Alright then, let's see how it looks from afar. Oh, I really like that to be honest. I just need to light some bits up with some torches and then it'll be pretty much done. After putting up a ton of torches around the ship, I went up the dirt staircase to take a look at it. That honestly looks really good, I'm really happy with how it came out. And look how close the grass is to spreading into the planet, I can almost finally finish it once and for all. Everyone knows that you can't have a pirate ship without having a place to park it. So at the start of day 84, I started working on my next project, a boat dock. I worked throughout the entire day until the sun went down and carried on working throughout the night. I really like how it's coming along and I want to make it slightly bigger, but unfortunately, I'm a little low on wood. And on that note, I spent the entire rest of the night of day 84 and the morning of day 85 chopping down wood. After collecting around two stacks of logs, I headed back home and resumed construction of my dock. Once again, I worked through the entire night, expanding the boat dock and giving it some depth. Oh, it's starting to spread. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> if I was going to make a boat dock, I had to at least make it somewhat practical, right? So, at the start of day 86, I carried on expanding the rest of the dock and then made a couple of boat slips. I then crafted some boats and parked them up. I then headed into my castle to get one final good view of how the dock looked. Honestly, I'm really happy with how that came out. It's, it's looking good. To add a little extra cherry on top, I spent a short while connecting the gravel path all the way from the castle to the boat docks. With the grass finally spreading to the planet, that meant that I could now start planting vegetation like flowers and trees on it to make it feel more alive. Sadly, I was running low on saplings, so I spent the rest of day 86 and the first half of day 87 punching leaves. Anyways, I replanted some saplings at the tree farm and then headed up the dirt stairs and onto my planet. Whilst up there, I planted tons of flowers, roses and saplings. Once these saplings finally grow into trees, the planet is finally going to look more alive and then I can say it's officially complete. At the start of day 88, I wanted to take a break from building, so I headed down into the mine shaft to have a peaceful mining session. Apart from finding a couple of diamonds, I didn't really find much else in this branch mine. So with that being said, I headed back up to the surface and spent the rest of the night storing away the items in my inventory. At the start of day 89, I noticed these three massive trees outside of my house, so I had an idea. Hmm, these trees are actually quite big and you know what? I could do. I could actually make a small tree house. That would actually be quite fun. And so that's exactly what I did. I started off by making my own tree trunk and then added some ladders to act as an entrance to the tree house. I then added some logs for a floor and used some planks for the walls. I repeated this process several times until I had an empty and hollow wooden box. All right, looking good. Let's decorate this place up a bit now. I didn't really have much space to add anything too extravagant. So I ended up making a little study area with a chair and some bookshelves and then added a couple of paintings on the walls. I then spent the rest of the night making a rooftop balcony with a little chair on it. And there we go. Now it's time to enjoy this beautiful view. I couldn't enjoy it for too long though because it was now day 90 meaning we're on the final 10 days. Damn, that's flown by. And so with that being said, I wanted to make one final project in this world, something that will encapsulate everything I've built so far. I wanted to build a monorail. The idea was to have a railway that goes around and throughout my entire property so you can see everything I've built throughout the entire 100 day journey. To do that, I was going to need a lot of supplies and one of those supplies was a bunch of wood. So I emptied out my inventory and went over to my tree farm. I chopped down all of the trees until I collected just over two stacks of logs. All right, this is a good start, but this is nowhere near enough. I'm going to have to venture out somewhere for a bit and find some trees. So I went over to my dock, hopped in a boat and sailed over to a nearby island with a ton of trees. In fact, there were so many trees on this island that it took until the start of day 91 to take them all down. As you guys are well aware by now, I'm not a fan of floating leaves, so I set them alight using my flint and steel. With one island being deforested, it was time to go to another, so I hopped back on my boat and watched the fire slowly burn behind me like a hero in an action movie. Alright, this island has a ton of trees, so let's get chopping. After a long while of chopping, I had accumulated just over 9 stacks of logs, which I thought would be plenty for the entire monorail project. So, I headed back home. You know what? Forest Fire Avenue could do with some trees around since it feels pretty naked compared to the rest of the land. So on that note, I grabbed a bunch of saplings from my tree farm chest and spent the rest of day 91 placing them all around Forest Fire Avenue. With a ton of wood at my disposal, it was time to move on to the next phase of this monorail project. Of course, you can't have a railway system without, well, rails. So at the start of day 92, I headed down into my mine shaft to start a mission, collect a ton of iron. I ran throughout the rest of day 92, collecting a decent amount of diamonds and a whole lot of iron. It's actually quite funny that the moment I'm not actively going out looking for diamonds is when I find the most amount in a single branch mine. Ah, Minecraft, you work in mysterious ways. I continued mining well into day 93, collecting every piece of iron ore I saw. After going at it for almost two days straight, I thought I had plenty enough to make tons of rails. So I headed up to the entrance of the mine shaft and put all of the iron ore to smelt. Once it all finished up, it was day 94. So I headed back home and gathered all of the supplies that I was going to need to begin the construction of this monorail. Okay, Okay, I have all of the supplies on me, now I just gotta find a nice area to build this thing on. So, after walking around for a while, I decided I wanted to build it on this hill that overlooked my dock. Before starting the construction on the monorail itself though, I had to build a place where someone would go to get a train ticket. Well, in this case, a minecart. So, I built this small brick cart that was meant to resemble a train station ticket booth thingy, or whatever they're called. Anyways, I then made a platform out of cobblestone, and then it was finally time to start placing down the rails. From here on out, things were about to get slightly repetitive. Why? Well, let me tell you. I'm gonna be following this blueprint of this monorail design that I built on one of my other worlds, which I'm gonna have to repeat many, many times until I do a complete loop around my entire land and ending all the way back at my train station. So for the entirety of day 95, I extended the railway from the start of the platform on the hill all the way next to the side of my castle and by the docks. I continued this process at the start of day 96, this time making it wrap around the back of my castle and all the way up to the front of my lighthouse. As I was putting up one of the support beams, I had an epiphany. Wait, I just remembered that I used all of my iron to make rail tracks and I didn't craft any minecarts. And on that note, I went back into the mine shaft one last time. Thankfully, it didn't take too long for me to find all of the iron I needed. So when I returned home, I put all of it to smell and then crafted two minecarts. One for riding and one for being pushed. You see, there were no powered rails in Minecraft Alpha, and so one of the only ways I was going to be able to get speed without constantly having to come off the minecart to push myself was by getting pushed by a minecart with a furnace powered by coal. Anyways, it was the start of day 97, so I got back to constructing the monorail. On this day, I made quite a lot of progression as I extended the railway from the front of the lighthouse through my sugarcane and tree farm across the Never Islands, past the village, and all the way to the entrance of my mine shaft. For the whole of day 98, I went back, placed a ton of rails, made some support beams, put down some stairs, and fenced off the monorail. At the start of day 99, I resumed extending the railway. This 
time going from the entrance of my mine shaft to behind the greenhouse all the way beside the treehouse cutting through this dirt hill and wrapping all the way around back to the start of the monorail where the train station was with the whole monorail going around my land and looping back to the start it was time to place all of the rail tracks after placing a bunch of rail tracks down unfortunately i ran into a slight issue oh my god i've run out of rails this might be a slight problem yeah i slightly miscalculated how many rails i was gonna need and so for the rest of the day i placed down all of the stairs and fences instead Alrighty, day 100 we finally made it there was absolutely no time to waste because i only had 20 minutes of real life time to completely finish building this monorail so i put the pedal to the metal and finished as fast as i could all right final few fences here and we're officially done now let's ride this baby all right let's place this minecart down and i guess let's just take a trip around everything i've built in these past 100 days and what in 100 days it's been it's just been one of the most fun experiences i've had playing minecraft in a long time and here we are riding past the castle which is one of my favorite builds in this entire world to be honest and just next to it of course is my beautiful pirate ship and the docks which i think really complement the castle really well and then of course we have the planet just above us here which took forever for the grass to spread onto but i think it was worth the wait and then just in front of us here we can see the lighthouse which was one of the very first builds in the entire world and then a little hot air balloon floating in the sky over there and we definitely can't forget the brick pyramid i built which is totally a one-to-one -one scale version of what it's meant to resemble and then of course to my right here i have the infamous sugarcane farm that i did many daily harvests on and then over to our left we can see our beautiful house Ah, I love it so much. And ah, the wooden bridge crossing over to this nether island with this stupid glowstone tree that took forever to build. Oh, I hate it. And of course, we have the pre-1.14 village, which is really cool. I like it a lot. And of course, my brand new and very trusty mine shaft down here. It served me well in a very short amount of time, I must say. And of course, I didn't have enough rails to finish this thing. So um, <laughs> ignore this. I'm just gonna have to walk to the other side. One of the most underrated builds on this world is probably my greenhouse. I really like how it looks. And down there beside my house, we also have the cozy little water garden, which is probably my second favorite build of the world. Anyways, let's hop back on this minecart. And then last but not least, we have the treehouse, which I'm pretty sure I built on day 89. And yeah, that was a cool little side project that I just randomly thought of and then decided to build. So I really like it for that reason alone. And yeah, that's pretty much the whole 100 days of this world summed up. If you want to see more 100 days, maybe even a beta version next, let me know in the comments below. And as always, please like the video and subscribe if you're new. Goodbye.